Are you looking for a soft, fluffy dinner roll recipe that will go perfect with any meal, from soup to salad to meat and potatoes? I've got the recipe for you, matrimonial rolls, and I'm going to show you how to use your Bosch Universal Mixer to make them. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm here to help you create your slice of country living with practicality and finesse, wherever you may live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old-fashioned values like cooking from scratch and gardening and modern conveniences that make life easier. Today I'm introducing matrimonial rolls, the most famous dinner roll recipe you've never heard of. The recipe dates back to the 1940s or 1930s or possibly even earlier. My mom told me as a young girl when she was growing up that young women were judged for their suitability for marriage based on two criteria. The ability to catch, kill, pluck, and cook a chicken and the lightness of their bread and rolls. Matrimonial rolls, so the story goes, can help a girl win a husband. And I'm sure it works the same for guys who like to bake. And if you've already caught your special someone, matrimonial rolls are so good, they might just fall in love with you all over again. They're soft, they're fluffy, they're slightly sweet, they're perfect with any meal. By the way, I've created specific videos for the KitchenAid Artisan Mixer and the Ancus Room Assistant. So if you own one of those two mixers, you can go directly to the video that corresponds with your mixer and learn to make matrimonial rolls using the same mixer that you have in your kitchen. And if you haven't yet purchased a heavy duty stand mixer for bread, be sure to check out my video KitchenAid versus Bosch versus Ancus Room to help you make the best decision. And please share the video links with your friends who are interested in baking. I would really appreciate it. Well, let's get started. The ingredients for matrimonial rolls include half a cup of melted butter, a cup of milk, three tablespoons of honey, two and a half teaspoons of yeast dissolved in a quarter cup of warm water, three eggs, and five cups of flour. You can use bread flour or all-purpose flour. We're going to use bread flour today. If you like to bake with whole wheat flour, visit my website, chocolateboxcottage.tv, and find tips that I share there on using whole wheat flour in your matrimonial rolls. I'll put the link in the description box below the video as well. And you'll also find the printable recipe there. Let's set up our Bosch mixer for making bread. We'll be using the dough hook and the dough hook extender today. So drop the dough hook extender in first and then add the dough hook and spin until it clicks. There we go. That means it's in position. Add the splash ring and this will keep your counter clean. Our first ingredient is melted butter. It is freshly melted and quite warm. So I'm going to add the milk directly to the butter to bring it down to a temperature that's safe for yeast. And then we can add the honey to that mixture. And you can just estimate. You don't need to dirty a measuring cup. Give it a little stir and then go ahead and add this to your mixing bowl. Now it's time for the yeast, which has already been dissolved in water. And the eggs. Now we're going to start the mixer on low speed to beat the eggs. Now we'll add a cup of flour and the salt. And we'll get that started mixing. And I'll continue adding the flour about half a cup at a time. The dough has started to come together and it's leaving the sides of the bowl, so that is our cue to stop adding flour. Now it's time to begin kneading. And unlike other machines where you would swap out one attachment for a dough hook, we started with the dough hook, so we're going to continue with the dough hook. 
I will turn the machine on low speed. You always want to knead on low speed. And I'll set the timer for five minutes. We can watch the dough develop right in the bowl. It's pulling away from the sides of the bowl and it still looks sticky and shiny. That's exactly what we want. The Bosch has been kneading for about five minutes and the dough has come together nicely. Now it's time to get our hands in the bowl and check what the dough feels like. Making sure that the machine is turned off, just take two fingers and gently touch the dough. It should feel tacky, but not overly sticky. The best way I can compare this is to a post-it note. So touch the sticky side of the post-it note and then touch the dough. They should feel remarkably similar. Our dough looks good. So I'm going to pull the dough hook and flip the dough out onto a buttered surface. Okay. You can, of course, let the dough rise right in the work bowl if you prefer. But I find that this little bit of hand kneading really helps bring the dough into a smooth ball and that will mean smooth rolls and smooth bread. So I have buttered a bowl and I'll just put it face down in there and then flip it over smooth side up. Now we can cover it with a towel and let it rise until doubled. It's been about an hour and the dough appears to have doubled. It can be kind of hard to tell if it has doubled, so we're going to use the poke test. Take two fingers and gently press the dough like this. You don't want to poke holes in the dough, just press gently and release. Now take a look at those indentations. If the dough immediately springs back towards your hand, you know the dough needs a little bit more time to rise. Give it another 5, 10, 15 minutes. If the dough just gradually pushes back, it's just right. And if the dough just kind of sighs and collapses in the bowl, then you know you let it rise too long. The next time, give it a shorter amount of time to rise. So turn the dough out onto a buttered counter. There we go. And rather than punching it down, just gently deflate it with your palms. Take a little bit of that butter on your hands. Cover the entire piece of dough and remove those big air bubbles. Now, this next step is optional, but really does improve the flavor and fluffiness of your matrimonial rolls. Reshape the dough into a smooth ball again, and give it a second bowl, rise in the bowl. So see the smooth top here? We're gonna preserve that smooth top and put that on top in the bowl, cover it up, and let it rise a second time. The second rise is going to go quicker than the first. It may only take about half an hour. So set a timer and remember to check. In the meantime, generously butter a 13 by nine inch baking dish. The dough has doubled again. It looks great. Now for the fun part, we get to shape our rolls. So I'm gonna turn the dough out onto the oiled surface and pat it down flat again to release those large air bubbles. And keeping in mind that the smooth surface of the dough that was on top while it was in the bowl is now on the bottom touching the table. Our baking dish is going to make six times four, 24 rolls. So we're gonna divide our dough into 24 even pieces. A smooth piece of dough like this makes it easy to divide into even pieces. So I'm going to use my dough card to divide the dough in half. Each quarter makes six, and each one of these little sections will each make two rolls. And keeping in mind that the smooth side of the dough is on the bottom, I'm gonna divide each one of these into two pieces, and then just begin to stretch and pull into a nice little balloon shape, pinching the edges underneath, just like that. There we go. Let's do that again with the other half. So smooth sides on the bottom, and we're gonna pinch the edges together and make a nice smooth teardrop shaped roll. 
Now I'll show you a second way to shape rolls. Smooth side on the bottom, just do a little bit of preliminary shaping and then bring it over to a smooth surface like a kitchen counter or a table and just cup your hand over the dough and scoot it in a circular motion until you have a smooth roll and the edges just seal themselves on the bottom. Let's do that again. A little preliminary shaping, then flip it over and begin to turn and scoot the dough to seal the edges. And in a jiffy, you've got this beautiful round roll. I'm gonna to continue to shape the rolls and fill up the pan. Okay, the rolls have all been shaped and they are in the pan ready to rise again. I'm going to cover it with the towel once more and set them aside to rise. Now keep in mind, the dough has already had two in bowl rises, so this is actually the third rise. It's going to go pretty quickly. Set a timer for about 15 or 20 minutes and then come check on them. And in the meantime, have your oven preheating to 375 degrees. The rolls have had their time to rise, now it's time to bake. We'll put them in the oven and let them bake at 375 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Well, the rolls are out of the oven and they turned out beautiful. They're a deep golden brown on top and a lighter golden brown underneath. It's time to taste. Oh, look at that. So soft, just beautiful. Get your best jam from the pantry for these rolls. I opened a jar of blue elderberry jelly and a jar of apple butter, and I think I am going to go for the apple butter. Mmm. That's the way a roll should taste. It's soft, it's scrumptious, it's lovely. Wouldn't you be proud to serve these rolls to your family and friends? I hope you do. And I hope this recipe for matrimonial rolls helps you get more comfortable with your Bosch Universal Mixer so that you bake more often. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen today at Chocolate Box Cottage. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.